So I've been using the Egg Rider display for about six months now. I shared my initial thoughts on it, um, but now from my point of view there's been quite a major update with the, uh, the operating system that runs it in that the, uh, the display now has greater integration with ASI controllers, um, in my particular case with the ASI Back 800, but I believe it's with all of the ASI controllers because they have the same protocol. Um, so for anyone who's not really seen one or used one before, the Egg Rider is a really compact, stealthy display unit and it sits on the handlebar of your bike and it lets you control the various levels and some of the settings um, for your motor and your controller. Um, it also has a, a Bluetooth aspect which I'll, I'll get into pretty soon. The Egg Rider is very simple to operate. There are only four buttons on the display itself. Um, you power it on with this orange one at the back. You get a quick flash of the logo and then it's on and working. That's it. The only other buttons that you have here are to adjust the, the pass levels up and down. And then this one here switches between the road and the off-road mode. If you hold down this lower button it will actually dim the display slightly. And then you hold it again and it will make it bright again. The display gives you a reasonable amount of information. You've got the voltage at the top, battery percentage, whether you're in road or off-road, um, kilometers or miles an hour, the PAS level, power level. Um, I have it set to watts. You can also have it set to amps if you choose. The time and also the estimated range and the, uh, the kilometers you've done on the trip. So for the last sort of six months or so, I've been just using it as a display. Um, this button here that switches between the road and off-road has not been available to the ASI controller um, but this new update has made that available so I'll be able to show people how that works with the ASI controller. So one of the nicest parts about this display is the ability to turn it on here and then connect to a phone app. So if I come over here to my phone and click on the Egg Rider app, you're going to see your Egg Rider already should be displayed here. And if you touch on that, it will make a connection to it, and we're in. Then all you need to do, well, it's already done it for me, but uh, there was a symbol up there to connect you to the display. And what you get here is um, just some information, pretty much the same as that you get over here. Um, like it has your, uh, it has your PAS level there. And it lets you change um, up and down. Um, you can see that's also changed over there on that display. Um, there's the voltage, there's the percentage, there's efficiency stuff on here as well. Um, to be honest, I don't really use the phone display on the bike. It's not something I like having a giant phone stuck to the front. I mean, that's why I went to a small display to be stealthy in the first place. Um, where it does get really interesting is using the menus on the phone to control the, uh, the display. So within this uh, display on the phone app, what you can do is you can click on this settings button here and then you need to click up on this top corner here and then it gives you everything inside. Um, you get the display settings and these change basic things to do with the display here. So how it displays the units, power, um, like for example I could change this one to, to current or efficiency if I wanted to. Um, there's various things about locking it, powering it on and off. Um, you can call it eco, I think. See, so, yeah, eco or sport, if you wanted to call it something different. Um, and the most important part, really, is setting um, the battery that you have. And as you know, it's not done there. The wheel part must be on there. Oh no, here we go. Wheel circumference, um, and I measured that, so that's the uh, in millimeters. So uh, if you click on the ride button. It will give you a, a list of various rides that you might have been. It starts recording as soon as you set the app going. Um, so this gives me some statistics from the ride. So the max power, it says it was 4,512. I think that's the peak. But max speed, um, you can get graphs if you want to look at graphs with all this various information. Fortunately, you can't export that at the moment. So it's not quite as useful as I would like it to be. Um, the main page though is the ASI settings page and this is the bit that I really like because 
Um, if I click down here to read off the uh, ASI controller, it then tells me exactly what settings I already have on there and I can change these and have a road and off-road. Uh, it's just one page, very, very clean um, and a few settings. So you've got the throttle max power, the PAS max power, the, the motor current, um, the regen, which is, which is braking, which is not really something that I do at the moment. Um, and then you can set the throttle max speed. So these are set for BC settings, which is like 500 watts on both and a 32 kilometer an hour top speed. Who thought of that? I have no idea. Um, it's actually quite pathetic riding this fat bike with only 500 watts of power. Um, but it's pretty easy to change them. So for example, if I wanted to change this and put 750 in it for both and give it a bit more oomph, I would just do that. And then if you come down here and click to write, and it tells you you get a successful response. Now, I will say one thing when you're programming this, it's very important after you've done all this to turn this off and to turn it on again. Um, I suspect that's how I managed to screw up my original um, BBS HD um, controller unit because I, I permanently locked it to 15 amps. Um, I've actually sent the unit off to, to Egg Bikes and uh, hopefully I'll find out exactly what I did wrong. But there's, uh, there's another video on that if people want to watch that. Speaking of the, uh, the original BBS HD stock controller, um, if you do have one of those, you can do all this stuff um, that I just did with, with that controller, um, as long as you're a bit more careful and don't stuff it up like me. But it does work, it's just a lot more complicated in that there are four pages um, within the phone app like to do general settings and pass settings and talk settings if you have that on a, on a Bafang Ultra and uh, what's the old pass settings as well I think but four pages and some of the information is kind of conflicting so um, yeah it's definitely a lot simpler with this with this ASI protocol so overall I'm really happy with the Egg Rider display um, I'm going to be using it on my X1 powered Salsa Via frame um, you can get one of these um, direct from Egg Bikes uh, from their website. Um, this is with a high go connector for a Bafang harness, uh, but there are other connectors you can get and you can use this with other platforms other than just Bafang and the CYC motor. Um, so yeah, you can order them direct from Egg Bikes um, and they'll send you one, um, or you could order them as part of an upgrade kit um, from Electric Race Technologies. Um, there are other resellers I think that do that as well in England. Um, so yeah, you've got the X1 motor and then what you would do is say you would order like, like a back 800 from, uh, from Alan and then he will send it with, uh, with a harness and you can pick either his, uh, color display or you can pick this egg rider and that way you will get everything already wired, plug and play, you know, everything's updated, firmware and everything, um, straight to your door. Um, so yeah, those are your two options. Uh, I have a spare one, uh, so I think what I'm probably going to do is uh, a bit of a giveaway at some point. Um, so that's my uh, update finished for the uh, for the egg rider there. Um, I'm going to leave it there for now, and what I'm going to do is the next video I do on the egg rider will be kind of like I don't know almost a wish list of stuff that I'd like to see in a, a version three of this because it is it is very much a product that's still in development. Um, they're looking at the software all the time and making improvements. Who knows, uh, maybe I'll get the uh, the 3D printer out and uh, prototype a, a, a mock-up of what I, uh, what I think it should look like. Anyway, cheers.